Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. I'm here to talk to you about the top 12 type mistakes. Let's get something clear. The human eye does not measure as accurately as a computer. You want me to prove it? Have a look at this. Look at this letter T. It's two rectangles the same size. Or are they? Watch what happens when we zoom in and have a look at this. They're not the same. How come? It's because visually we look at the weight of vertical and horizontal lines different. And typesetters have known this for centuries, literally for centuries. This is a very old idea. And all modern fonts that are created correctly are created with this in mind. So when you start messing with typefaces and modifying them, you're breaking these rules and you're making it difficult to read. Again, this is not based on design being someone's opinion. This is based on the way that we look at things. So you ready for the first one? The first one is scaling type horizontally. Yes, I know you've done that. Don't do that anymore. I'll show you. So you're trying to fit a headline in somewhere in whatever application and you start to take the width and you change the width. Why is that bad? It's bad because an extended typeface needs to be created with that extended weight in mind. A type designer will take a regular Roman face and they'll design it in such a way that it fits correctly with the rest of the, the weights in that font. Okay, so that's number one. Don't horizontally scale type, either fatter or thinner. Just don't do that. Pick the proper typeface or change the spacing of the characters to fill up the space you need. The next one is don't make fake italic. Again, italic typefaces are designed with the original typeface in mind, and they're an italic version of that. So don't do this. Don't take a typeface and then, and then you do something like that. That is wrong. Even if you don't understand this and you don't come from a type background and you can't recognize it, just use the proper typeface and just never do this again. Again, there are weights, as I was showing you, let's go back and, and look at this typeface. There are weights in here for that. So they're created again correctly for that italics, okay? Number three is don't make fake small caps. What are small caps? Small caps are when the lowercase letters are not made of lowercase, they look like small capital letters. And what some people will do is they'll just grab the first character and they'll make it larger. I guarantee you, if you just look at this next example, you will be able to tell which are the correct small caps and which aren't. Have a look at this. Can you tell? You should be able to tell. Let's look at the weight of this one. This one's 92 and this one is, oh, it's 92. This one is 83 and this one is, uh-oh, 120. But this one is 83 and this one is, uh-oh, 121. So if you said the top version here was real small caps, then give yourself a pat on the back. This is a typeface that was created uh, specifically for that, it's Trajan Pro 3. Uh, Copper Plate is also another one. There's not a lot of them. There, there, there are, there's, there's enough to choose from that you don't have to make your own. But the weight, you can just tell that when you take a small capital letter and you just make it larger, the weight of that is now changed. The next one is poor kerning. And designers, we know you out there, you kern everything, right? You kern signs, you kern um, lower thirds in television shows. You're always looking at it. You can spot really crappy kerning. So kerning is the space between individual letters. Really good typefaces come with something called kerning pairs because the space between two O's is different than the space between two I's. Now in, in Adobe applications, Alt on Windows, Option on Mac, left and right will kern. So if, if you look at this, I've got the, the um, 
cursor placed between here and I can just move that around and I can change the kerning of those characters. If you select all of the characters and do that, then you're changing the tracking. It's not the same thing. It's important to understand the difference between these two. Who do you think is the worst offender of the worst kerning out there? What application? Yes, it's PowerPoint. Uh, admittedly, it's much better in 2016, but if you go and look at some really old versions of PowerPoint, seriously, one word looks like it's two or even three different words. The kerning was so crappy in it. Number five, inches instead of quotes and the foot mark instead of a single quote. Again, this is not based on opinion. There are true quotes, sometimes called curly quotes, um, that um, are, are real quotes. And if they're not, then they're inches. Hey, I was, I was just dissing Microsoft for PowerPoint, but hats off to them for automatically always making the correct curly quotes because there's a quote to go in and a quote to go out. Let's go look at Illustrator. So I'm holding shift, quote, go to the end, shift, quote. These are real quotes, not inches. And if in Illustrator we can open up the glyphs palette, so those are the correct quotes, and these are not. So, and the same with single quotes too, which are quotations inside quotations. What's the big offend biggest offender of this? Unfortunately, it's the title designer in Adobe Premiere Pro is not smart enough to put these quotes in. So occasionally, I'll actually jump out and, and write something that needs quotes in something else and then copy and paste and bring it in. Uh, there are a number of tools. I know on um, OS X, there are keyboard shortcuts with Option Alt, Alt Shift, oh, sorry, Option Shift and the inches and it, and it does the correct quotes, but just that is uh, a really bad one that, that when you're using the, uh, the wrong inches and foot mark instead of that. Okay, next up is justification. And this has more to do with the confidence that you have in, in setting type. Uh, so I'm just going to do something here. Okay, I'm just gonna grab some type and drop it into the bottom here. And I'm justifying this on the left and leaving this ragged on the right. And too many times I see someone thinking that everything has to be center justified. And that's a very typical mistake. Center, 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 only because they think that this symmetry helps and it really doesn't. Um, it's okay to stick type uh, down in the bottom and the side in the corner and have it justify and leave it there. In fact, let's take this and I'm, I'm gonna right justify this and stick it in the corner and justify it over there. Okay, number seven is conflicting colors. And I've seen this and this is uh, colors that just don't work like blue on red. Ouch, that hurts the eyes. You might think that that's really bold. Uh, it's just annoying and hard to read. There is a point where you can smack someone in the face with contrast of colors and then you go beyond that where I can't even, I mean, yikes, that is pretty bad. So that's uh, number seven. Number eight is type over a busy background. So here is type over a background that isn't busy and you can actually read this quite easily. But watch what happens when we now have a busy background. You can instantly see that the type color and the cloud color are conflicting. In certain points you can read it, but definitely in other places you can't read it. Like right there, that's a problem. So you basically have three options uh, at this point. You can add a drop shadow to this, and that helps somewhat take the opacity up. That helps a little bit. I, I tend to, to think that um, on a very complex background like this, it won't work. Uh, you can add an outer stroke to this. And again, that gets a little bit um, tough to read. So I think that the best solution for things like this is to actually create a backup object, a backup shape. So I'm just gonna drag in a shape and make this black, pop it all the way to the back and take the opacity down. And I don't have to use black. I could choose a different color if I wanted to. 
So now when we read this, now you can see that. Number nine, script fonts in all caps. Don't work, baby. If you, I don't care if you think it does, or even if you went out and got a tattoo, that's all script. Script fonts are never meant to be in all caps. They're script. They're supposed to emulate the idea of cursive handwriting. So this word powerful is not as easy to read as if I opened it up and typed it correctly. That's much easier to read. Number 10, I'm calling misaligned a script connector so that when some of these scripts connect to each other, they don't make, they don't connect exactly as if they were written by hand, like they're supposed to be emulated to do. Uh, instead, they're, they're, the kerning is off in them. If those connectors are off, you can really see that. You can see that in the letter R. So hopefully this came with a kerning pair that makes it look correct, but sometimes those will be off and you need to correct those with a little bit of kerning. Next one is strokes used inside. And back in the title designer, if you add an inner stroke to this and turn it up, you can see that it's starting to eat away at the inside of that. So if you add an outer stroke to this, and make it larger. Now it fills out on the outside of that. This is a very easy one to get wrong and you, you want to back up that, especially in, in video, you're creating lower thirds and you want that type, so you create a, a stroke on the outside. After Effects has this uh, where you can flip it between uh, foreground and background. Illustrator is a little bit trickier. If we go back to Illustrator, we've got this script font. If we add a stroke to this and start turning the stroke up, you see that it goes on the inside and it also doesn't correctly show. You can see each break with the typeface. It's not really flowing together. So in Illustrator, the way to get around this is to not add the stroke here. Add the stroke in the appearance panel underneath the character. So if I add a stroke and drag that stroke below the characters, now when I change that, you can see that it flows beautifully within those characters. Now let's go look at number 12. And this one's not up to, to debate. Here's number 12 in the top 12 type mistakes. Never use Comic Sans. Never, 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 never. That font can't die fast enough. Don't ask why, just don't use it. If you have, just walk away from it and never use it. It's a horrible, hideous font. Everybody knows that. All right, so there's a, a loose list of my 12 top uh, type mistakes that I think are very easy to make. And if you follow these, then everything is going to look better. Okay, great. Hopefully you found this informative. If you're new to Video Revealed, please take a moment and subscribe. If you want to support us a little bit more, join us over on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you and your type looking better.